So, what do you get? If you start with a Bluetooth transceiver processor thingy, add a super capacitor, a solar panel, a couple of PCBs, some 3D printed structure, and some components and expose it to some weather. That's right, a cheap, wireless, self-powering weather station. I noticed that most commercially available weather stations costs uh, several hundreds of euros and uh, all that I've seen requires some kind of battery or uh, even a power line. So I decided to design a completely open source weather station uh, that can be made for a fraction of that price, so maybe below 50 dollars or around 50 euros and uh, that requires very little maintenance so uh, no battery change or no no power line to the house and what, what I hope uh, this will do is allow uh, weather station to be spread all over the world to uh, collect data perhaps to some uh, central storage uh, place like a web page and uh, what I'm hoping for is in that way to get a better picture of uh, the, the problems we're facing with global warming Next, some technical details. And the heart of the weather station is this little device. It's a Leard PL600. See over there. It is a uh, Bluetooth transceiver and Bluetooth 4. But also it has a processor and a bunch of uh, inputs and outputs. And here you can see connection to a external antenna if you want that. And uh, it's quite cheap. You have 12 euros. Last time I checked, it's very small. Uh, as I mentioned, it has Bluetooth V4, so this is the low energy type, also called Bluetooth Smart. And uh, that allows it to be very low in power consumption. They uh, as an example, they, they explain uh, four microamperes, which of course uh, is at a very, very uh, slow update speed. But um, uh, just as a comparison, which I will show you later, this is uh, ten times, ten thousand times lower than the amount of current the uh, solar cell I want to use have. So I have a lot of tolerance there. Um, to uh, to make this work and so more specifically it has 28 GPIOs it has 6 ADCs up to 10 bits and support for a couple of uh, interfaces now 4 microamperes is of course extreme that's the best figure they can give but for the weather station we might get close to it since we don't uh, need to transfer information often we can be happy with every 10 minutes or so so I have uh, quite confidence, maybe not 4 microamperes, but let's say 50 or 10 or so. Now you might say that Bluetooth is not really the, the best choice for uh, this communication since it's quite low range. And that is true indeed. Uh, but if you look on the internet, there are a lot of uh, nice directed Wi-Fi projects and Wi-Fi uses the same frequency range as Bluetooth. Uh, here you have some kind of net which is used, you have some uh, CAN, I've also seen uh, Pringles boxes, and they're all uh, uh, able to make it very cheap. And uh, my idea is to uh, design an expansion uh, for this, so if you really need the, the longer range, um, some 3D printed, printed structure combined with maybe uh, some conductive net can be placed next to uh, all the other things on the weather station and uh, 
then uh, you can increase the range uh, a lot. I've seen uh, examples of up to a kilometer or so. So, uh, also promising. Somehow I need to store energy uh, for my weather station. And one uh, option would be to have a battery, but I chose to go with uh, super capacitors instead. And uh, it's mace mostly because uh, you can do a lot of charge and discharge cycles with, uh, with these kind of capacitors. There is no memory like there is in some batteries, and also uh, there is no uh, complex charging involved, like trickle charging for some batteries. So uh, I chose uh, uh, these uh, supercapacitors. And I think it's quite cool to see the development, especially uh, when it comes to price uh, for these capacitors. So as an example, I have here, this is considered a very large capacitor normally. Can get it into focus, but uh, these capacitors which you see in front of me they are uh, a thousand times uh, larger in terms of uh, farad, so capacitance. And uh, as we see here, we can have uh, one with 2.5 farads, you can get it for only five euros, so that's approximately five dollars. And um, I have uh, bought three of them. You see five examples which I found, which are uh, quite uh, promising, and three of those I have bought. Um, and if we go to this one, you can see here it's 11 euros, and if we look at the specifications, 5.4 volts, 2.5 rods. And this one has worked quite well, I've tried it, and uh, it has lasted with a very not optimized power consumption of the weather station for maybe uh, a few hours, I think four or five hours. And uh, I also found one for five rods, which is actually cheaper, which might look strange, but it might have to do with it that it has a slightly lower voltage rating, so five instead of uh, 5.4. Uh, so, I also bought these Vichy uh, capacitors, and they are uh, even cheaper compared to the amount of, of uh, capacitance they have. So, I'll, I'll not spoil the surprise for you, but... Let me see... There. So, this is a tiny 15 farad capacitor. And you can compare it to this one, which had 2.5. Quite amazing, I would say. Um, then we have the other Vichy, which is quite a lot more expensive. It's 20 euros. But it also has a higher voltage rating than the other one. And if we look at the amount of capacitance, 90. Uh, more or less insane. So, uh, if I want to talk about my experiences, uh, this one has worked quite well, as I mentioned. These two, however, gave me a lot of problem. So what I tried to do is simply connect, first charge up one of these, then connect it to the weather station, and see how long it would last. Now this one lasted about five minutes, then uh, uh, the, the charge was out. This one did last a long time, uh, about three days, but if I look at the characteristics, you can see in one of my other posts, it is not linear, so I would expect a straight line uh, in voltage over time, going like this. And what I saw was more um, uh, stepwise um, reduction in voltage. And what I also noticed is if I try to uh, draw current from it, so it's rated in its data sheet for uh, I think less than 3 amperes, and I use this. Uh, resistor 10 ohms to simply draw 0 0.5 amperes from it and it didn't take long before it completely uh, uh, stopped delivering any current and the voltage went down to very low and that was a problem because I needed to discharge it uh, to a voltage which the, the um, processor I have can tolerate 
and which is 3.6 volts and this one was uh, I think around 4 or 5 and it took me forever <laughs> to discharge it and when I when I applied a resistor which was uh, small enough so it could go faster it simply stopped working so in other words uh, in my experience the Vichy capacitors are crap you have to find something else to do them and what I will do is uh, also try these two other examples I will buy them especially this one because it has double capacitance and uh, uh, see how that goes the weather station will need an anemometer something like this obviously better printed than, than this one has been and that could be a very tricky part because you need some kind of coils and magnets and a lot of complex uh, details both to measure the wind speed and uh, to uh, get the energy so maybe the most difficult part is that you want to com we want to combine it uh, to be both a meter and supply some power so my idea was to actually use an old fan you can also buy them new because they're quite cheap and the advantage here is that they in general have this very good uh, ball bearings which makes very low friction and they even have at least the DC fans uh, have a built-in hole sensor which you could use uh, to uh, simply sen uh, sense how many turns it goes and uh, basically it's uh, as uh, most motors they can also be used as a generator so my idea is simply to use two wires from from it and uh, either measure the wind from the pattern of the the sinus wave I get or use the hole sensor over here one problem uh, with this is that when we are actually getting power from the circuits and the the um, revolution per minute will change so let's say you you're drawing a lot of uh, current into the, the capacitor then it will actually turn slower than if uh, the capacitor is fully charged. So for that I might choose to use a solid state of relay or so, so that during the second um, that the uh, uh, wind speed is measured is actually not charging the capacitor. To uh, charge the capacitor I mostly want to rely on the solar uh, cell however and I have three examples that I bought uh, which are reasonably interesting this one is of course a bit big as you can see and I don't think I will use it but it's it's quite cheap 8 uh, euros or so and uh, delivers quite a lot of current in the voltage range I'm interested in uh, and here we have a very small one also cheap only uh, it's less than 7 euros uh, 5 million amperes, so much less obviously and also quite um, a bit lower in voltage rating the most interesting I've found is this one partly because of its shape it's very nice to put uh, on the box I want to make but also uh, um, it's 50 million amperes, which is quite a lot for the the size and the voltage is higher uh, I want to go up to maximum 5 so this is quite good but it's a bit more expensive well, 10 euro 50 uh, so my decision is to uh, go further with this one and incorporate it in the in the design now I'd like to show you a small demo of the Bluetooth uh, connection and what you have in front here is most of this is not that interesting but here we have a BL600 uh, which uh, communicates to this computer a wand board but a Raspberry Pi would work equally well here is the Bluetooth dongle which uh, communicates to the chip 
here we have the capacitor. I charge it up to 3.3 volts, and I'll uh, soon uh, connect it to the to the BL600. And over here I have logged into the one board through SSH, and I have now instructed the one board to uh, wait for a connection. So let's apply the power and see what happens. So it might be a bit hard to see, but basically immediately we see a connection forming over here. And as a first measurement, it always says 100. So now the uh, BL600 has been transferring messages for 50 minutes. And uh, so there are 50 measurements made one measurement per minute and you can see that the battery level is on 70 percent and on the one board uh, that I use as the base computer I also installed OpenHub uh, which is an, mostly a uh, home automation software but uh, I'm also using it for this purpose and here you can see that the battery level is uh, reported so 70% and if I press on it I can see uh, the progress over the 50 minutes which we had so as I said 100% is just the first measurement then we can see the gradual decrease in, uh, in voltage and if we would continue waiting we would see that this one ends up somewhere after about 5 hours on this um, partly charged uh, capacitor which you can also see in one of my posts thank you for watching